right, guys, welcome back to another Trail Makers video. In this video, I'm going to be explaining how to build a simple drone that you can add on to and stylize to make your own. So for anyone who didn't watch the short earlier this week, I actually showcased this drone right here. And uh, this is a good example of what you can build using what I'm going to show you today. So right here, this one looks a little crazy. It has uh, some strange colors, but this is to kind of separate the different circuits of the drone. So I can better explain it. So before I give you step-by-step uh, -step instructions on how to build it, I'm going to just explain a little bit. So each of these different color separations is a different circuit, like I said. So this blue one right here with these helicopter engines and the distance sensor is for stabilization. All these go in different directions, all these helicopter engines. And together with them always on because the distance sensor is always detecting the distance between here and the seat it all just keeps it stable in the air and then in the back here we have this yellow circuit this keeps it at a steady altitude uh you can see that we have an altitude sensor a speed sensor and another speed sensor they all go into this xor gate and then the xor gate goes into the gimbal jets and then we have these mini thrusters that make it go forwards and backwards and then all the way at the bottom here we have the turning mechanism which is just a helicopter engine that will spin the whole thing left and right. Now with that, I will show you how to build this step by step and all the configuring that you're gonna need to do. All right, so first off, you're gonna grab a seat. I'm gonna go with the diving bell because that's what I've been using. Then uh, the first thing you're gonna add to it is going to be the gyroscope. So grab yourself some helicopter engine V2s. You're gonna stick one on each side of the diving bell like this then in order to power that you're gonna need to use a distance sensor facing something so for this example i'm just gonna have it like that and then i'm going to grab a one by two and stick it on here i know i had it a bit different on the other drone but this will work just as well so now on the distance sensor i'm gonna select it go to the configurator uh don't need to change any of this but i'm going to need to Make sure that it has all the switches on on these helicopter engines like that. They should all be green. Then I need to select all the helicopter engines, take away all their controls. We do not want to be controlling these. We want the distance sensor to just keep them always on. All right, now for the next circuit. This is going to be the gimbal circuit. Put the gimbal jets on top. So now we need to put in all of the logic parts that we're going to need. An XOR gate. Put that right here. Uh, it doesn't matter where you place these on your uh, drone. You can place them wherever you want. An altitude sensor. And then I need two speed sensors. Now, in order to connect this, you don't actually have to have it like plugged into the gimbal jet. That that doesn't do anything. But that is just how I put the gimbal jets on. Because as you can see, the gimbals are not connected. They have the little yellow exclamation points. So I'm just going to connect the gimbals to the back here. All right. Now that you have this, you are going to need to configure each of these three logic pieces right here. The speed sensors and the altitude sensor. Put them so that they're outputting to the XOR gate. Just like that. All three of them have a green switch onto the XOR gate. Then select the XOR gate and make sure that it's outputting to the gimbal jets. So now I am going to show you how to configure the three other logic blocks that go into the XOR gate in order for this to work. So real quick before I show that, I need to explain how the XOR gate works. So it, it only outputs a signal to the gimbal jets if one output is not zero. So if any more than one output is not zero, it will no longer work. So I'm going to have a base input to it so that it's powering the gimbals. And that base input is going to be this speed sensor right here that I'm going to set for trigger below five kilometers per hour. Now, depending on how heavy your drone is and how fast you want it going up, I believe that you can play with these numbers I'm gonna tell you, but I've just found that this works well. So this one's gonna be set to five. Now. I'm going to go to the other speed sensor and I'm going to set it trigger at six. What this is going to do is there will be one signal as long as the, the kilometers per hour is going upwards. I forgot to mention this, but it is important that the speed sensors are facing up because this fan inside measures the speed of the direction it's facing. So make sure that it is facing vertically. But what this is doing is setting a base input. If the thing, if the, if it's moving upwards below five kilometers per hour, so that means that it's going to be going up, but then we don't want it to pick up too much speed going upwards. So we have to cancel the trigger at six kilometers per hour. The way it cancels is because this is also going to output into the XOR gate. I mean, there's two outputs. 
meaning the XOR gate will no longer work. And then the third input to it, this is another cancel. Just go ahead and put this to whatever the altitude you want your vehicle to stop at. For me, I'm gonna put it at 50. So this will also cancel the output from the XOR gate when it reaches 50 meters above the ground. All right, so give, go ahead and give your drone a little test and make sure that it reaches the altitude it's supposed to. So as you can see here, mine has reached 50. It's going a little bit up and down, but not too much. And uh, overall, it is pretty stable. So if you're just looking like this at the altitude it's supposed to be at, you're doing good. So real quick, we can just go ahead and add the mini thrusters. Four mini thrusters with two of them facing backwards and two of them facing forwards just like this. On the back ones, set them to RT or whatever you want your forward control to be. On the front ones, set them to LT or whatever backward control you want them to be. So that will control your forwards and back. And then for turning, go back to propulsion and grab yourself a helicopter engine. Not the V2 this time, but the regular one. For left turning, put it on the green side. And for right, put it on the red. And probably turn the speed down. You can play with this again for your drone. Uh, I'm going to set it for two for me. And now you should be good. Let's go ahead and give this one more test now that I have the controls. It actually seems to be floating... A lot better it's actually not going up to 51 anymore now to add the extra weight so that is definitely a plus and uh, you can see that it does turn pretty well and it is pretty controllable and uh, this is preference I think it does make it a bit more stable uh, but if you want you can also turn off the air controls which I am gonna go ahead and do so in order to do that just click on your seat go to configure disable air control that will stop it from rocking in the air when you're trying to turn So yeah, this is working pretty well. All right, guys. Well, I hope this video helped you build your own drone. If you're able to successfully follow the tutorial, I hope I explained it well enough, and you built your own little stylized drone, feel free to join our Discord, linked below and also linked on the channel page. And uh, you can sh share pictures or little clips of it there. And uh, with that, comment below anything else you want me to explain how to do in trail makers and i'll see if i can do it and uh if you enjoyed please give it a like consider subscribing for more trail makers content and uh we'll just see you in the next one bye